Okay, so here we are with our sketch where we have loaded a drum beat that we are now looping. Uh, and we are also now know how long this loop is and we know how we can access all uh, any point in time or while it's playing what what the number is at that point okay so <clears throat> we are now going to do something with this current time and this duration okay so uh, I'm not gonna console.log anymore of this that information is not that useful to me so I'll just get rid of all this I'm gonna keep this current time though okay so what I'm gonna do now is I want to take this current time so at any given point while my uh, loop is going it's going to be giving me a number here so here's what i'm going to do to start i'm going to create a variable i'm going to call this variable let t all right just for time i guess okay so i'm going to use the map function so if you remember map is going to take uh, a certain variable or number that's changing and it's going to take it from one range and then give it a new range that we can work with okay so the variable i want to change is the current time right so it whatever the current time of my uh, my loop is okay so the the minimum and maximum value are that the minimum is obviously zero so if it starts from the beginning it's zero and then the maximum is depending on the sample in this case is going to be the amen sample I'm gonna write duration okay so that is the range okay remember duration tells us exactly how long the sample is so that is the maximum length of the sample so the current time will start from zero and it'll go all the way to the duration of the sample whatever that is so now I want to map that to a different value so what I'm gonna do is just map it between zero and width all right so basically now I have uh, a value of how long my sample is when it's playing it starts at zero it goes all the way to about this number the six 0.97 and then it's going to convert it into uh, a number between 0 and the width which is going to be this variable t okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make an ellipse okay and I want this ellipse to move across the canvas from left to right from but during the entire duration of that sample so in the beginning of the sample it's going to start at one side and by the end of the sample it's going to go all the way back to the beginning and then when the sample loops it's going to move back okay so sort of create just this scrolling uh, ellipse across the screen here so the X is going to be T so the position is going to be somewhere between 0 and width which is mapped uh, between 0 and the duration of the sample and whatever the current time is so I'll just do it right in the middle and I'm gonna make it maybe a 30 as its size okay so now I'm gonna press play and we should see the circle just sort of move its way across uh, as the sample is playing so here we go So there you have it. So now I have a circle and it's moving its way around uh, or across the canvas. So this is just sort of creates a, a little bit of animation that is connected to my sample and its loop and how long that sample plays for. All right, so that's uh, one thing. So now I have this T, I could map it to something else. I could maybe map it to a color. I could change the value to HSB. And so it kind of goes through all the colors of the rainbow while it's playing. I guess while I'm saying that, maybe let's even just give that a try. Um, it shouldn't take too long, so I'm gonna copy paste that. All this stays the same, so I'm just going to do between uh, 0 and 360. I'm going to go up here and, oop, not in uh, that, but I'm going to go uh, color mode to HSB. And then I'm going to make, uh, i got to remember my background here, so I'm going to do 0. I think it's like 50. And then I'm going to do a fill of uh, C, which is my color. That's going to change between 0 and 360. And then 100, 100. Remember, HSB is hue, saturation, brightness. Um, it's covered in a different video. but uh, And let me make my circle a little bit bigger, just so we can sort of watch it change color as we go. Let's see if this worked. Okay. All right, 
So I have a circle that also changes color, goes to the entire spectrum of the circle as we go. All right, so that's one thing I could do. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of this color for now. Um, but what I am gonna do though, um, I'm gonna get rid of this for now as well. I'm gonna keep the zero to 360 and I'm actually gonna play around with something a little different. I'm gonna get rid of this fill, okay? So instead of an ellipse, I am going to use uh, a different shape, which some of you may have played around with called arc. Okay, so arc, if I jump right into the references real quick here, I'm gonna search arc and uh, the method. So arc is how I can kind of create sort of half circles or uh, not full circles here, okay? So if I look at the, for arc, I have an X and a Y, so just like a circle. Basically these first four are like the X and the Y of my circle and the width and the height. So just like the regular ellipse function, okay? What I am now looking at are these, there's two more variables that I can use, which is sort of the starting point and the stopping point of the arc to create uh, not a full circle. And those we're gonna wind up doing in degrees. Now it says radians here, uh, but mm, I don't like radians, it's confusing to me. So first thing I need to do if I'm gonna be using arc is I'm gonna go up here and I'm going to do what's called angle, capital M mode. And then inside that I need to write degrees. All right, so I have angle mode degrees here. Uh, inside of that, what I am going to do, uh, back down to arc. So I'm gonna make a, a circle right in the center of the canvas, 200, 200. I'm gonna make it a pretty big circle and make it 300 by 300, okay? So now just to sort of show you, um, and I'll just stop the loop for a second. So I'm gonna start it at zero, and then I'm gonna go like 180. So this means that it starts at zero and it stops at 180. So this should give me a half circle. Okay, and there we have it. Uh, I have a red background now, which I'll keep because I changed the color, it doesn't really matter, okay? So there you see, this is the zero point and then this is at 180. So you can see what would happen if I change this to 270. Okay, so it now goes all the way around. If I were to change this number to say like 90, so then the starting point is there. So you can kind of get a sense of how that works. I'm gonna keep this at zero though. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I am going to sort of make like a ticking clock almost, um, which is going to start over here and then it's just going to kind of complete the circle as I go around. So I have this variable C, which is mapped between zero and 360. So I start at zero and you're gonna see the circle kind of go around and around uh, as the sample is complete and by the time we get to the end of the sample, it'll have completed a full circle. So it's almost like a pie, chart or pie graph of how far through this sample are we. So here we go. Oh, what happened? Oh, I am not looping my sample, okay? But you'll see uh, the sample is at zero, so it actually goes all the way back around to zero, okay? But there's an error on my part. My sample's not playing. That's why we're not getting anything here, but let's try it. So there you see, so I just have this circle that kind of going around and completing. So that is how we can play around using the current time and the duration methods in our loop and then accessing those using the map function to add them and make them uh, add stuff to our animation, okay? So there's gonna be one more extension video to this where we will incorporate the amplitude function again. So not only are we working with the current time and duration, we also then have the changes in the amplitude as we go.